So this is the game that I've been making for the past two years. I wasn't really happy with it lately and what a better way to improve it than to delete it. And that's exactly what I did. I took the core of Polycalypse, the gameplay, and I threw all that hard work in the trash. But wait, that doesn't mean this is the end of Polycalypse. I actually took some time off YouTube to work in silence and this is what I did in the meantime. I made a huge new open world map with multiple points of interest. The map is divided in two parts by a river that flows through the middle. On the one side of the map there are farmlands, sawmills and a huge forest on the hill, while on the other side of the map is the more urban area consisting of a small town, destroyed military camp, a church and a camping zone in the mountains. Player will be able to explore all of these new areas using the new character controller which will have one of the most advanced features to date. Diagonal walking. Yep, that's right, I finally took my time to add that to the game after more than 2 years. Even though the new character controller is very cool, 10 out of 10, recommended by 9 out of 10 dentists. Wait what? Alright, it's much better than the previous one, but it has its limits unfortunately. It doesn't help you to walk across minefields and there happens to be a huge one surrounding <coughs> The government has put these minefields to contain the infection because it- Am I kidding? I've put those in to keep the player from falling out of the map. This new game mode will be nothing like the previous arcade mode where you had to survive waves of zombies. This new game mode will feature NPCs, quests, actual survival elements and so on. I've added only two NPCs for the time being, but I'm planning to add much more in the coming updates. Every NPC will come with a team, so for example we have Marta Baker here, I won't read her description now but she's basically a strong lady who loves farming and you'll get rewards according to her team. For another example we have Tyrone Brown or T-Bro which is a car mechanic and will give you fuel, tools to repair your cars and weapons related to his team. How do I get those rewards I hear you ask? Well I've made a couple of quests per each NPC and they will randomly ask you to do random stuff for them and if you do it successfully then they will reward you with a few random gifts. Actually there is no way to cancel a quest at the moment so you have to complete it if you start it or restart the game I guess. To be able to start a quest you need to talk to the NPCs and obviously yelling at your monitor will not help. Trust me, I've tried. So I had to make a dialogue system to communicate with NPCs. I call it a system, but it's actually pretty simple. Depending on which quest they want you to complete next, you will get a short briefing of the quests and an option to help or not. If you choose to refuse a quest, you will only postpone it for later, and if you choose to do it, the quest will start and a short description of what you need to do will pop up on everybody's screen. There are also these goal indicators which help to lead you to where you need to go. After you complete a quest, you need to return to the NPC that gave it to you, so you can claim your prize by clicking this button here. Up until now, it was all sunshine and rainbows. You do quests, you get rewards, which help you move up. But there are also things that will try to stop you. I'm talking about bandit raids, which will try to attack you or your base, but you can find out more about raids, a storage system, vehicles and much more stuff in the next update which is coming really soon. Thank you so much for watching, please leave a like and subscribe, it's absolutely free and it keeps me motivated to make even more content. See you in the next one, bye.